Hello, everyone. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, we thank you today. We give you praise and honor for the mighty, powerful name that is above every name that's named the name of Jesus. We open our hearts today for revelation from heaven, words that move heaven on the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Greg, I'm reminded <clears throat> men and women are saved, healed, filled with the Holy Spirit by hearing words. Yes, sir. Faith comes by hearing, hearing. and hearing by the covenant of God. Yes. The, his bond. Mm. His very bond. I like what Milan Lefebvre says. God is absolutely honest. Yes, he and is. what he says, he'll do it. Yes, sir. And when I believe that, I, bec I activate that yeah. in my life. You believe it in your heart? You say it with your saying. mouth, and then you plan everything around that result, Amen. not failure. Yes, that's right. And those words create images in your mind of your having it, not being without it. Mm -hmm. Gloria and I began that when we did not have a bank account. Mm. And at the time, Gloria would go into the grocery store and pray in tongues that she wouldn't be embarrassed by ha not having, by having to take something back. And she never had to, she always came out even. Amen. Amen. We saw it back then and never changed that covenant image. Amen because I saw it right in those early, early days that Jesus was my blood brother. Yes, sir. And my yes, being Native yes. American, that got big on the yes, inside. Yes, sir. <clears throat> but we had an image of it. God made Abraham rich. I have, I have the blessing of Abraham. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. Now, I set Gloria down. I said, Gloria, we're rich now. I mean, this thing is nothing but a matter of time. And we never held any other kind of image again that we would be out of debt for the rest of our lives. We would never, and we would never ask anybody for a place to preach. We would never ask anybody to meet our needs. And the moment you accepted that, heaven, it's a reality. It was a reality the moment you believed it. And our ministering angels went to work to Absolutely fulfill the image. They did. Yes, sir, they did. Yes, sir. Go. And they're still doing that. Yes. We put a sign on our refrigerator at home uh, because we're really pressing into what we say for that very reason, for the angels. Wasted too much time on this in previous years and those, those years are being redeemed. We put a refrigerator a sign on our fridge. I wrote it by hand. It says, and that's exactly the way I want it. And so when we say something or when the kids say something about, I don't know, I just never can figure this out. I say, say that. That's exactly the way I want it, right behind it. Uh huh. And they can't do it because they'll say, "I don't know. I just never get. I never get picked. It'll that, never work out for and me." And that's exactly the way I want it. <laughs> oh, listen. And your spirit will stop you from that, Greg. Everybody needs a faith partner. <laughs> now, Gloria was the quietest person I ever met in my life. Like she said, well, I didn't need to talk. You, you do all the talking anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, I, I cannot describe this little house, little project house is built during the war in Tulsa. And it was awful looking. And so I went to my landlord and I asked him for paint to paint these uh, nasty walls. And, and he said, well, sure, I'll be glad to. Well, of course, it's the cheapest paintbrush on the planet, you know. 
<laughs> and we'd already made up, that's your confession, and I believe it. <laughs> and uh, I'd, you know, I'd say something, boy, I'll tell you what, I got so tickled I thought I'd die. Glory would say, well, that's your confession. You didn't die, so you lied. <laughs> and I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're in there painting. She's in one room, I'm in the other. And I got this 99 cent paintbrush, you know. And I'm, I'm dipping it in that ugly brown paint. <laughs> and I'm painting. And a hair came out of that paintbrush. And I had to pick it up. And I, and I said, with some force. Some like, that gum it, this thing's coming all to pieces. Every bristle in that brush came out and was just hanging there on the wall. I said, Gloria, come in here. Look at what I said came to pass. And there it was. <laughs> and we like it never got that mess out of that wall. Boy, you talking about making a believer out of me. Yes, sir. God just demonstrated right there. We are named in Christ Jesus. We're to act like him, talk like him, walk like him. That was his expectation. Okay, that's right. uh, I, I saw something here in the in, in those last statements of Jesus to his disciples at that covenant dinner in John chapter 14. He knew what was in front of him in verse 30. He says, hereafter, I will not talk much with you. Now, why? Why isn't he going to say? In other words, I'm not going to say a lot. And he says, uh, for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. So I, what cha what chapter? I'm, in, I'm in John chapter 14. 14, yeah. I went and to verse 30, yeah, 30. Hereafter I will not talk much with you. Now, now he's which, right there. Let me, let me tell you something before we get into this. There, this is the Last Supper. He's there at the table. Yes. They're in the middle of the night. And, and this is, he's going to the cross here in a few minutes. Yes, sir. I mean, this, Within this, hours. this is huge. The, the, the new covenant is coming into being right in their face. His entire purpose for coming here yes. is about to be revealed. He's fulfilling everything that's happened. Abraham with Isaac. He's, he's doing it all right here. And he says, um, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. So he knows in order to walk out the plan of God in my life, because the mystery is about to happen too. See, if Satan would have known, the scripture says. He'd never. Been. He would never have allowed this to happen. The, sec the second Adam is about to redo everything that the first Adam did. And so I'm looking at this. What did he say he's going to do? I'm not going to talk much now. I'm going to be pretty quiet from here on out. And now, do you, let's tie that in. Let's go to uh, First Peter. Oh, yeah. First Peter yeah. chapter 2 talks about this very thing. Peter, Peter will expound on it. First Peter chapter two. Now, what does that have to do with healing? Well, it has everything to do with it. Look at this, but verse nine, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth uh, the praises of him who's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 10, which in time past were not a people. That's, mm -hmm. there's that covenant again, mm -hmm. just like like Ephesians. In times past, you were Gentiles. You didn't have any covenant. And he's writing to Gentile people. There it is again. Which in time past are not a people. This is Peter now, not Paul. But are now a people of God, which had not, uh, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained chesed, mercy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You go on all the way down here and you get over here um, in verse 22, or verse 21. For even hereunto you are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. I don't see that as a suggestion. No. Who did no sin, neither was guile found where? In his mouth. Deception. Mm -hmm. No deception in his mouth. Verse I, you 23. Know, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, what's the ministry of the church? in the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. To build up the body of Christ speaking in love to one another. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not guile, yes, not sir. deception. 
Go ahead. Yeah, look at this here. Um, no guile was found in his mouth, verse 22, verse 23, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. Now we got too many believers today. Well, did you hear what they said about me? I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. You better not, you ain't much, much left. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. When he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed to him self to him who judge righteously who in his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you are healed it's tied to us t acting like he did yes in your healing your mouth is tied to your healing more than you realize just like it's tied to your salvation the only way you got saved is you confessed the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You're going to have to confess healing and not speak contrary. Can I take us over to uh, Mark chapter 11? Mark, and you can guess you know where I'm headed, right? Verse, yes, I do. Verse 20, Mark. I'm in Acts. No wonder it didn't look right. Mark chapter 11, verse, you know, verse 22, have faith in God. Verse 23, verse 24. Now look at verse Look at this. And when you stand praying in verse 25, forgive. Jesus thought that was so important that hanging on the cross, he forgave. Mm -hmm. Could not have done what he did without it. He's hanging on the cross. He thinks that this verse is so important that hanging on the cross, he'll do that. Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. So it must be important. When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Verse 26. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Now, if the Father doesn't hear me when I pray because I'm, I have ought against the body, then will Satan, does he have to listen to re a rebuke of mine? I grew up rebuking the devil. I mean, that's all we did. Everything was the devil. Now you'd, they'd have testimony. They don't do that much anymore in church, but they had testimony meetings, Brother Copeland. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I remember this one lady, she'd say, oh, it's like a badge of honor. The devil has been wearing me out this week. Bless his holy name. That's what she'd say every time. <laughs> every single time. I'll never forget it. When, when I almost called her by name, she's in heaven now. But when she would stand up, she'd say, well, the, blessed, the devil has been working double time in my husband. And she was always talking about her husband. Bless his holy name. And she's blessing the devil's holy name. And I guarantee you her angel's still standing there just. And then her husband got saved and she got mad about it. <laughs> it's the truth. She didn't have anything to testify about anymore. My mother. <laughs> She'd prayed for me a solid 13 years. And, you know, you've heard me tell this. And one day she just threw a Bible down on the kitchen table and she said, I'm not praying for him anymore. If he goes to hell, it's your fault. Gloria got saved in two weeks and I got saved in three. She said, if I'd have known, I could have done that back because I was casting your care over on him. Mm -hmm. She said, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But it's, anyway, she called me, Craig, she said, Kenneth, and she, my mother was a cut up. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was a hoot. Anyway, she said, Kenneth, I've had the driest three months spiritually <laughs> I've ever had. I said, well, how come mother? She said, you got saved and I don't have anything to pray about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what she said. She said, I'm going after your whole football team. <laughs> she did. Amen. And the beautiful part of it is, I mean, th those guys, I'm, our, our team, we're, we're still close. And we've been out of high school since 1955. But we had the first really winning football team that high school had ever had in its history. And... Uh, They'd, we'd get on the bus and they'd have me sing just a closer walk with thee. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you know. And, and I've, I've had the honor and the privilege 
of preaching their homegoing services. Amen. I've had the honor and privilege of watching them get born again, is one right after the other. And even after mother already gone home and be with the Lord, they just kept getting saved. She got the whole bunch. <laughs> Isn't it marvelous? It is marvelous. But I heard that in my spirit. I was rebuking the devil one time. Uh, and it's just as loud as could be. Now, I don't know if it's audible. I don't think it was, but I'm the only one in the car. I can't. He doesn't have to listen to you. That's why I heard my spirit. He doesn't have to listen to you. I mean, you didn't have to listen to me. Devil, you're a liar. And I realized that wasn't the devil. That came from my spirit. He doesn't have to listen to you because you have not forgiven. You have odd against your brother. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not love, I'm become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand mysteries and knowledge, though I have faith that I could remove mountains and have a lot of, I am nothing. <laughs> so you have a fuss on the way to church. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then in the middle of church, stand up and give this great message in tongues and then even interpret it. A lot of noise. That's right. God didn't even hear it. I said to him one time, I said, Lord, how do you handle all that unbelief? He said, what unbelief? Hmm. I said, well, the times that I prayed in unbelief. He said, what unbelief? Oh, you didn't hear it. That's right. I go, that's the answer to that in Mark 11. He doesn't hear that. He didn't hear that. I remember one time I was driving, uh, I was still in the reserves at this point in the military. I was driving from Tulsa with Brother Hagen. I was driving to Oklahoma City. Um, I can't remember now, Michelle and I were just newly married and I'm praying in the spirit about her because she needs to change. Did he do that? <laughs> Watch her shake her head. <laughs> 90, 90 miles I wasted. <laughs> praying in the spirit, specifically targeting her that she needs to change. And finally, as I was pulling into the base, I just, I just, uh, now this could have been audible. It sounded audible to me. I just said, Lord, she's just so picky. And I heard, and she picked you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but it's a convincing of, of the words. Now, Jesus got quiet. Get back to this thing here real quick. He got quiet because of where he's headed into the garden. Yes. It all happened, the secret of the garden, reversing the curse. In 1 Corinthians chapter um, 15 and verse 45, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the last man, the last Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Oh. God for, formed the first man out of the dust of the ground, and he formed the second man, Adam, yes. in a womb yes, he did. of a little girl. The secret of the garden, that original sin, that original transgression happened in a garden. Jesus will become sin or put on sin in a garden. He's fulfilling to the letter everything. Adam invented sickness and death, put us all on it because of a tree. Jesus is going to remove sickness and death from you because of a tree. That's right. And it's all happening in this garden. Now, here's the interesting thing, because Healing is, is spiritual, it is physical, and it is mental, soulish. Yes. The three disciples he pulls with him, uh, the Lord showed me this, represent something. Uh, he pulls three aside from the group. James is the body. Peter is emotions. Peter was all the emotions all the time. And John is the spirit, love. Yeah. And so he pulls those three into that covenant he's making right there in his own blood in that garden. He's reversing what Adam did. This is why I had to get quiet. And this is why he pulled those three that each represent in their writings. James represents the body. Peter represents the mind, will, and emotions. John represents the spirit, yeah. love. And he pulls those three with him. And it's all a picture for us of this atonement. This is why he said, I'm going to be quiet now because of where I'm headed. He had to fulfill what started in a garden had to be ended in a garden. And that's why he walked into that way. And he said, I'm not going to talk a lot now because 
the evil one's coming. I'm not going to give him any ammunition. And if you would learn that right there, mm. if you would learn just that right now, that the healing anointing is available to you right now, you just need to start hooking your words up what, with what you believe. Start saying what you believe, what the Word says. And see yourself with it. And see yourself with it. Yes, Jesus paid a, a huge price for this. You remember what happened? to the father of John the Baptist. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And shut him up. Yes, sir. And that was so powerful. He, he couldn't speak. That's a priest too. Yeah. So his words, he, 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 he was anointed. His words were powerful. Mm. And that angel had to shut him up. It was so strong that by the time John was born, he couldn't hear either. Mm. They had to write down yes, um, what they said. He lost his hearing during all that. Wonder what he was thinking that caused him to lose his hearing too. Oh no. Well, take heed what you hear. Yeah. Well, evidently he's thinking the same stuff he was saying. And at the same time, there's two people, um, a man and a woman at the temple daily waiting for the Messiah yes, to come. Yes, yes. At the same time. The prayers knew. The prayers knew something was happening. And the prayers know today that we're close at hand. Amen. And now's time for us to, to become the body of Christ and walk in this healing anointing that he paid. What did it cost heaven? Everything. Everything in heaven. Everything. Everything. For God so loved the world. And so, listen, it's time to forgive. Whatever You want to walk in health? I'm telling you, you forgive them. Brother. Forgiveness is an act of the will. Faith is an act. Faith must have corresponding action. Absolutely nothing to do with feelings. It's a commandment. We're commanded to believe on the name of Jesus and love one another and to forgive. You have to do it now, right now. Don't wait till you feel better and keep your mouth shut. We're out of time. <laughs> but it's so important. What you're dealing with right now, you better deal with it and forgive if you have ought against any and do it with all your heart. But it starts with your heart and your mouth to obey. Jesus. Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.